Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn slash Heaven's Word. And today, we're going to be finishing up the Kobold quest line because I've been doing dailies for this every day for quite a while. Uh, it's not as bad a grind as other MMOs I played like Ion or Vanilla or Burning Crusade World of Warcraft rep grinds, but it's a rep grind. And since we started this quest line, I want to show you how this quest line ends instead of just making you just go, well, what happened? We never saw anything else about it. So here we are. Okay, so we've missed a few cutscenes in the meantime, but I'm sure if you remember a single thing about this, you'll remember that the quest leader for this particular faction is, shall we say, not the bravest. And it uh, is actually a really good quest line. I really enjoy the quest line as a whole if you pay attention. If you don't pay attention, it's, well... <laughs> what the hell you expect me to say about it, but it's, it's, uh, it's one of those quest lines that you either love the NPC chatter dialogue or you just absolutely hate the characters. One of the two. You either think they're charming or you think that they're weak little craps. Personally, I think they're rather funny, but that's just me. But let's be honest, the only reason any of us are going to do this rep grind, one, unless you're like me and really like the lore, that's probably not the reason you're doing it, Two, the reason you're probably doing it is because of the rewards, which I'll show you towards the end of the video, because that's the whole reason I did this rep grind. Now, for people who just have no idea what do you get, well, I think at rank two or three, I think you start getting paint, different kinds of dye, not paint, different kinds of dye. Rank four, you get access to a minion and a mount. I think some are rank 5, but I, I don't know about that. I know I'm at rank 4 right now with the Kobolds. Trusted, or whatever it is. And no, I'm not going to be commenting on the story. I'm assuming you can read by yourself. I'm going to give you that baseline competence, I'm assuming. Which is a lot, considering in some MMORPGs, you just have to wonder how they get up and, you know, out of bed in the morning. Some people you play with, but I'm going to do you the courtesy of assuming you're competent. So... Yes, this is one the one scene where I just w actually got sad. This is like the turning point in it for me, because you could tell he genuinely cared, man. Well, until a little bit later. So, a lot of people probably don't like the way the mount for the kobolds look. I love the way that looks. Well, and the way your character sits on it, if you're a Makote. I don't know if it's the same animation for every race, but I know for my particular race, I love the way that mount looks. Do bear in mind, though, the mounts are, if you're new to the game or semi-new to the game, fairly expensive. I think they're like 120,000 gil, which I had like a million. Well, you saw how much money I had previous. That's how much money I had, and I decided, well, it's, it's worth it. If you've never played an MMORPG before, mounts are always expensive. Granted, in comparison to what I'm used to, it would have been like the mounts costing like 5 million gil, but... I mean, you know, I, I just remember my first Mountain World of Warcraft, I saved, and saved, and saved money until I finally got it, and I was so proud of it, you know, that 60%. And then I would see somebody with an epic mountain, I would want to cry. <laughs> but, back off of nostalgia, and back onto what we're actually doing here, the Kobold quest is, well, every rep grind in this, I'm assuming. I've only done two so far. The further you get into the levels, like, you know, rank one, rank two, rank three, you get access to more tiers of quests. With each progressive tier, the quests seemingly get more and more annoying. Mainly because, well, you gotta go deeper and deeper into the stronghold. And for the kobold one in specific, there are a few quests that are just plain annoying. Like, Escorting, escorting a bomb when you can't do anything else, and if you get hit, the timer goes down. But eventually you learn the path to take, and you don't get hit anymore. But, I mean, you know, it's still a threat. So if you're going to do the rep grind, be aware, it gets a little more annoying as you go forward. Some beast quests are a little more annoying than others. Kobolds isn't that bad, honestly. It's just learning the roots to not get hit in a few places. Uh... Sahagans are still, they're pretty good. A lot of their quests go take you to an instance, not an instanced area, they take you to a separate island where you can just do your thing. 
I think there's like three different, there's two boats and an island. You still have to go into the base, but it's not near as often. I haven't done the Exali, I've heard the Exali are more of a crafting thing, which I'm not really... That's not my bag, I prefer just killing things, I'm old-fashioned that way. At least not until I get to max level. Then I'll craft the crap out of anything. I think my next plan once I've got... well, obviously I'm not really done with the kobolds, but I am for now. But the main thing I'm going to be focusing on after this is probably the Sahagans and then the Emulsia. And then I think the only one left is the Exali, and it's the... Uh, no, Sylphs. I gotta do the Sylphs yet. Right, I gotta do the Sylph gr rep grind. Okay, so for the actual quest, your job, if you didn't actually pay a single bit of attention, and I don't blame you if you didn't because I was talking the whole time, was to essentially be terrorists. Please, NSA, if you're watching this, I don't mean in real life, I mean in-game. <laughs> so, your, your thing is basically set a bunch of bombs, and we're gonna blow them up. Of course, it's not really a threaten here unless you pull everything. And you are, like, not level 50, which, by this point in the rep grind, I, I think they're assuming you're level 50, considering all the XP they've thrown at you to this point. But if you're not level 50, this could be challenging, because you won't kill things in three hits, like I do, but... You know, just basic MMO sense, don't go pulling everything if you can't handle it. You'd be surprised some people do not follow this tenant, and then complain and ask for a res, at least on my server. But, well, I, that's not fair. That's not a fair thing to say. It's just, it's just overly generalizing. Oh, by the way, I will make one suggestion if you're going to be doing these rep grinds. Always, always memor try and memorize which, not leave quest, each daily quest has a fate requirement. Meaning this one I'm seeing up there, that's the one I've been waiting for. I basically gave up on that and I went, eh, screw it, I'll just kind of, because I didn't really pay attention to us, you know, Picking up my quests. Usually I try not to pick these up, but, like I said, always do them if you have the opportunity. Because you can save these up for later, when the fate's not up, and turn it in then so you don't have to wait around going, Oh god, what do I do? I'm just sitting here waiting for this to spawn. Don't be like that. Just, you know, take the time out of your day when it's up to just do it, and you don't have to worry about it after that. Of course, if you don't have a lot of gear, this particular fate is probably going to kick your crap, you know, all over the place, but, uh, well, that just means you gotta find a different strategy to work. I decided I'm just gonna brute force this thing. This was not a good idea to tank this thing right in the middle of where everything spawned, but I don't do things the right way a lot of times. With nothing else, it kind of teaches you how to decently tank. Just rotate your cooldowns. Even though I'm not really tanking a single thing, I will be tanking the equivalent of a speed pull in about five, in about 20 seconds, though. Because everything respawns here, and yes, your actual, you know, goal is to kill this name thing, not just kill everything you can. So, like I said, this particular fate can get rather dicey if you just do what I did and try and focus down the boss. But, you know, you just gotta... Improvise, really, as a person. The what you should probably be doing with this is pulling that name mob, the kobold, like, back, so if they don't all respawn on top of you. But, and I also should have been using Infuriate. I don't know why I wasn't using Infuriate. I guess I was saving it for an oh crap inner beast moment, I don't know. I'm still trying to work on when to use my, you know, warrior cooldowns, steel cyclone, all that stuff. I'm, I'm still trying to learn about it. Making a genuine, genuine effort, but sometimes, even if Defiance does put on a 25% handicap, it's still better to do it. Not in this particular case. The main reason I did it in this case was for Steel Cyclone, when I really pro I probably really didn't need to be in Defiance, but... It also really didn't help that I, you know, sprinted on the way here and basically just screwed myself with TP, but... Eh, just a lesson, because if you don't do this, you will kick yourself later when you go, Oh crap, I could have just... Totally did that fate and just turned this in and we'd be done already, but I had to go and be lazy last time I was in the mines. You know, that's just one of those things. So once you're done, you know, getting all your fates done that you happen to see coincidentally, you can actually get back to the main to the story quest, or not main story, the uh, regular quest. And... Yeah, it's re I mean, really, I contemplate even making this video, considering that, you know, it's just doing questing. But considering I saw, I 
kind of gave you the first quest of this whole thing. I assume that people might want to know the conclusion to this story arc. So, uh, that's mainly the reason I'm doing this for folks out there who... Actually, I have no idea who this is for. But this is the video I'm making, dang, darn it, so that's what we're doing. It's my video, we're doing it my way. Even if I really fought a lot more things than I ever had to, considering I really should have just ran up there and tried to plant this bomb when everybody was looking right at me. And yes, that was sarcasm. It wasn't delivered very well, I'm aware. And this woman will never help you. I mean, she is, you know, awesome to listen to, but she never actually fights with you. That's what I mean by that. I have no idea why I'm fighting all these things. These are also part of a quest, a daily quest, but I don't have it right now. So, I'm really just screwing over anybody that, you know, might need that for a quest. I, I There doesn't seem to be anybody else here, so that breach of etiquette didn't really bite me, but... I think I'm one of a dying breed, folks. I'm a dying breed of, of Final Fantasy XIV player. Not because I'm planning on quitting, but because I follow the old, the, the you know, the rules of old when it comes to loot. I follow the rules of old when it comes to, you know, pretty much anything. If, if it's not an upgrade for me, I don't hit need. If, if I want to just sell it or turn it into the grand company, I greet it. It's a wild idea, I know, greeting on something I'm being greedy with. I've had arguments with people before, and it's, I don't, I don't, I don't cherish this, but I've had arguments with people before about needing and greeting, and it's a, it's a different generation. I'm in the, I'm in the minority here, and I, I need to accept that. If that warlock in Skolomance didn't steal my freaking devout crown back in World of Warcraft, I'm not still angry about that or anything. He totally didn't need that, even though he could hit need, he did it anyway. <laughs> It's just things like that. I don't want to get into a big rant here, but... I, uh... Yes, I, I don't agree with a lot of things people do anymore with loot, apparently. So, now that we're back on... Now that we're done talking about my pet peeves in MMORPGs, which everybody has... Not particularly that one, but everybody has their own pet peeves. This is a frigging awesome cutscene. I mean that. Pay attention to what's said and what goes on here. This is a, one of the better cutscenes in the game to this point, in my opinion. It's a little bit of comic, you know, comedic relief. But not all of it at all by any stretch. He wants to fight his own battle. So like a true friend, we are going to let him get his butt kicked. Because as a man, sometimes you've got to take matters into your own hands. Claws. Whatever they're called. Unfortunately, having heart doesn't really mean a whole lot in a fight. I don't care how many times you watch Rocky growing up and how much you want to sing Hearts on Fire, it don't freaking work, okay? You gotta actually put some effort into it. But seriously, during this whole time I was like, almost wanting to cheer for Gigu the whole fight. Because all the lore up to this point, he's just kind of a sniveling little... Well, he's a sniveling little crap. But you want him to be, you know, the big, powerful kobold you know he could be. That and his, you know, infatuation here. BB. Bye-bye. I call her BB. Well, now that I think about it, holy crap, this storyline is not child-friendly whatsoever. <laughs> Coming up. It's a dark storyline when you get down to it, really. It's what, maybe that's one of the reasons I like this story, this cutscene. Well, not this cutscene, I think the next one, but... Yes, that's the face you know that something is going to happen very bad soon enough. Of course, I'm not sure why he made that face, considering he knows what's going to happen, but... Yes, we're entering into terrorist thing right here. I don't know who the heck's in the right here. I don't know who's in the wrong here. I think we're both in the wrong, but he's more in the wrong, so it's it's okay, right? I mean, that guy's tortured kobolds. He's killed kobolds. We're just committing acts of terrorism here. He's like, well, what are you gonna do about it? Yeah, that, that, that's what he's gonna do about it. All your hard work, all your life's work, gone. The terrorists have won this round. 
essentially, is what was what happened here. It's like the argument in dungeons where if one person's a dick, is it okay to be a dick to that person? Usually the answer is no, but in this case I'll make an exception. Because that char that guy, that char nah, that kobold right there deserved it. If you pay attention to any of the previous quests, you will be almost, like, you'll be internally cheering at uh, Gigu here. And <laughs> like that, I was happy, like, yeah, he got his. It's not the most riveting story. But it's an underdog story. We all love underdog stories, right? We watched Rocky. We watched... Okay, I was trying to think of that one football movie with Notre Dame, but I never watched it, so I'd be lying if I said that. All I know is there's something about a Gipper, which I'm pretty sure is supposed to be an authoritative figure like a coach, but I, I, I've yet to translate that one. <laughs> but, you know, you know, after that, you gotta go all the way back. And I was ticked about that fate, because you know how many times I've had to go in there to get that fate? And it's not there. I had to wait like 20 minutes. And the one time I'm not in there, that's when it's up. Yeah, that's just a pet peeve, though. I could have went back in there and did it, but it was already being fought, so by the time I got in there, it had been done. It's just one of those, oh, of course, it's now. It's spawned. Why couldn't it spawn when I was in there? <laughs> Game always does that. Always just tries to make you hate life sometimes. Right, this was the really, really screwed up cutscene, because just read the text. Read it. And you will realize why that Gigu here is the man the way he... Or he is the man he is. Thankfully, now he has more self-confidence, but, you know, beyond that, he... Oh, I'll just shut up and let you read here, because this is important. Yes, for for reference, in the previous few cutscenes, she was telling him how he needed to be more of a man and stand up for himself. Now that he's done that, however, she's left. Some ladies you just can't win with, and some guys, for that matter, you just can't win with. Some people you just can't win. You can't. You, yeah, some people you just cannot win with. And this is a fact of life we need to understand. I've been both of them in that situation before. Actually, now that I think about it, I think the dark thing I was talking about was before one of the cutscenes when she offered to sell herself into a life of a concubine. And that's... that's... yes. I guess that was earlier when they made that whole, I will serve you for whatever, just don't kill him. I think that was during the fight. Now that I think about it, holy crap am I stupid. And you may notice I did turn on the, fir the first names. I figure, eh, first names, fine. You know, doesn't really matter if you see other people's first names, as long as I don't turn on everything. And for doing this, you also get a title, depending on the uh, the tribe you either get. I think for this one, it's the 789th champion or something like that, which is, you know, your the, the faction is the 789th kobold, whatever, so. It's just a little bit of, you know, glamour, essentially. This was totally not really needed at all. But it's... it's glamour. Stuff looks awesome. You have to get it if it looks awesome. It's an MMO. Half the end game is just sitting in a popular place and making people look at your gear, right? I wish I was being sarcastic there, it really... I, I've heard the Idleshire is the new one. You know, back in Warcraft it was Shatra City, Stormwind, Ironforge. You know, here it's Idleshire, Mordona, you know, the big cities. It still happens. People people legitimately only get gear sometimes just to do that. Maybe, I haven't run anybody into this game that'll do that, but I've heard of people in previous games whose whole whose sole purpose was to get gear so people would have to look at it. Some might call that sad, others might call that something else. I call it well I forgot the word for it. Holy crap. In motivation, that's the one. It's motivation. Who cares how, why you do it as long as you get it done. Now, the reason I did this was because I thought if I reset my rep, it would keep going up. But no, that's apparently the highest rank there is in the Kobolds. So, 
at this point, I'm really just doing this for the poetics. I mean, I really probably should have just went to the Sahagans and did all their quests. But why? I, I, I would like poetics, please. Because I really want those freaking boots so my pants don't look all weird. I bought the chest and the pants because they had more stats. Darn it. Practicality all the, all over glamour. But yes, the horn is the mount. 120,000 gil put me back under a million. I was so sad about that. But, you know, I did all this work. I want the spoils of war. You know, I want to... want to get that stuff. So... If you're wondering, what does this thing even, you know, really look like? One, you should probably be able to tell. And two... As soon as I can figure out how to put something on my hotbar, we'll actually see what it looks like. I prefer the way he sits on it than the way the actual mount looks, because the actual mount isn't really all that impressive to me. But it's a creative concept, and I applaud the, you know, the creative directors. But the way you sit on it, as a, as a male Makoti, it might be different depending on your race, is really awesome to me. Just because it just looks like you're ready to pounce off it, ready to beat the crap out of somebody, doesn't it? It looks like he's just ready for war, just sitting there. And yes, the only reason I'm doing this is to look at myself on the mount, because I just... I just spent... tens of hours probably doing these dailies. I want to see what it look like on the thing. It's the... It's the player's choice, and... Well... A lot of people will brag about it after they get it. So, that's really the reason I made this video, guys, is to show that ending of that quest, and how to get certain... You know, mounts that you may have seen around the world and had no idea how to get. It's through rep grinding. I believe the Sahagan get a Elpst mount. I believe the Amalgia get what? A really large lizard mount? I don't know. I might be wrong on that. And the Sylph, I think, get a Gubu. Or Gubu, however you want to pronounce it. I always pronounce it Gubu. I think they get that kind of a mount. And I'm off to do the Sahagan before the reset, which was about to happen at 2 a.m. So, thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this in some way, shape, or form. And hopefully you get yourself one of these mounts and enjoy it as much as I am. Farewell, everyone. Until next time.